Of course. And I think that makes sense. Uh, okay. So I've hit record. Welcome. Welcome to my two good friends and co-stars, Beth and Will. Hello, Hi. welcome. Who? Did you say welcome to me? I just said welcome. To me? Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Max. Thank you for being here on my our show max <laughs> is this like an are you guys interventioning me right now yeah Good we, DM we couldn't be without you will and i are now dming together okay collectively okay can we do my thing first though and then maybe we'll circle back to that yeah okay so, <laughs> thank you awesome awesome so um this is gonna be fun and I'm not going to spend too much time introducing it. I think we'll just sort of let things fall as they will. Uh, Atticus and Cornelius, you two have received a personal invitation to visit the Hotel Minnesota. Atticus, for you, I have to imagine this is probably your, not your first time. Not. I probably went the first time that they went. Yeah. What about you, Cornelius? Have you uh, Have you been out to the hotel before? Definitely not. Yeah. Well, you are uh, ushered in, and uh, you're pretty savvy with weird shit by this point, so it doesn't take you too long to figure out how to navigate to the schemer's floor, which uh, your respective brother and dad friend, Anderson Rivers, has passed along as the coordinates for this sort of secret meeting spot he's put together. And uh, Atticus, I imagine you wait for your friends so you guys can go up together. And I just kind of wait at the entrance next to Molly um, awkwardly. <laughs> like every time she looks at me, I'm like, stop. And uh, Cornelius, you arrive without too much pomp and circumstance. I go up to my good friend Atticus, who is uh, the only person I recognize here. I give you a big hug. Oh, hey, how have you been? Ah, so, so good. Welcome to what's, this. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, I was just going to say, what's all this? Um, a magic hotel? Yeah. It, okay. And Anderson uh, brought me here once. It's, it's it's all mixed up in that Dr. B nonsense. I assume it is. All right. Well, here, I'll, I'll lead us in. I, I remember the way, kind of. Well, no better person than me. All right, Atticus, lead the way. Uh, take us into the lobby. Um, if if Cornelius reacts at all to uh, Arden, I just I just keep shuffling him right along. We'll uh, we'll we'll get perhaps, coffee. Perhaps a, a tentative side eye, but just like talking, babbling through it. I'm like, yeah, you know what? They have a they have a Blunken plus plus, and they have uh, a bloat milk and all that. And oh, look, the elevators! Wow, Cornelius. Yeah, and... <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no. I was... I'm just going to babble some more, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys enter the elevator, and Cornelius, you stare at this uh, short little shadowy figure who is uh, facing away from you and says, What floor? And as they turn around, you recognize instantly blasphemy. The concept who tormented you uh, to no end during your time when reality collapsed. Where before the being was absolutely giant, He's like four foot something now. Shortness oh. comes for all of us in our age, I guess. Oh, good. Uh, Cornelius Miller. Mm. Oh, you know him too? Oh, I'm sorry, Cornelius. Ah, I should have warned you. I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, yeah, well, it's fine. Is it? I don't... Uh, it it's not. It's not. Okay, uh, Bean, can you just take us to the schemer's floor, please? Just, just write to scheme. What? Well, okay, there's no scheme floor. It's schemers, first of all. Yep, that's exactly what I said. Please. <sighs> please. Okay, yes, of course. And uh, turns around brusquely and types in something in a little keypad as the elevator shoots up. And after a short while, you hear the ding, and the door opens into a very small, dimly lit room. And you can see there's one of those old projectors um that would like blast out onto a uh like a like a pull down board you guys know what i'm talking about 
Yeah. Like the, like it opens the... to like a room and not like a hallway floor? It opens to one room. What the fuck? And uh, sitting in front of the projector, illuminated by the uh, reflective screen for receiving papers, you see Anderson Rivers, who says, Oh, good, you're here. I was sitting here menacingly waiting. Um, can you flick the light on a little bit? It's pretty dark in here. I flick it on and I say, Wow, nice to see you, you cheesy cinematic fuck. What are you doing? I have spent... Cornelius, thank you. Thank you for coming. Really appreciate it, buddy. Of course. Very odd place you have here. Yeah, I know. I have spent the last, like, 48 hours trying to piece together everything. And I think I'm close. But I need a little bit of help. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Help with. Um, so he, he points, and you guys can see after the, the lights are turned on a little bit, there's, like, two... Uh, little school desks like the the one piece table and chairs and anderson mm -hmm. says go on take a seat sit down i put a whole thing together this is and you said this was like chill like elementary school tables yeah they're like little elementary school tables i like squash my knees down and try and watch like laughing corn cornelius try to get his knees under this table i yeah. don't i don't even try i sit down <laughs> like on the table with my feet like in the chair seat mm mm-hmm like leaned forward yeah cornelius you're gonna get Reese's taken away <laughs> i haven't fit into one of these since maybe my junior year of high school Let's, don't get distracted by the attire this is all they had on this floor i don't think it sees a lot of use for some reason okay so Wait. Why is, the, why is the children floor the schemers floor? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know where this equipment came from, Atticus. I didn't put it here. It just it just came like this. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Okay. So you guys know I was locked in Heart and Stone for like 36 hours. And eventually yes. these three guys came by and they let me out. And they let slip a lot of weird information they were talking about what the end product of the game was they were mentioning some shadowy organization running this whole thing but something seemed off with them so i started to look into them further and i would like to present to you and he slaps down a piece of paper on the uh projector and you can see it's this like really hastily drawn team bouquet and Anderson says, these guys, these are the ones who interrogated me. And you're not going to believe what I uncovered about them. And he rips off the first piece of paper and then slaps down a picture of uh, this kind of young looking person with this short blonde hair, uh, some glasses and this sort of nervous expression. Cosmo Astrophel. Billionaire. Recently inherited a sizable chunk of heart and stone i think they might be funding the operation the the, the whole game all right because they knew some shit that no one else i've talked to in this whole game has known and i think they were trying to mislead me they told me that the organization was on a floor called caldera there's no caldera floor I spent hours interrogating Bean about this. There is nothing. Any questions so far? Are you sure she didn't like... Are you sure she wasn't stupid? Positive. <laughs> Next! And he rips off the paper <laughs> and slaps down a picture uh, of a person with like these dreadlocks and this bright and colorful hair. He says, this is Iris Lark, who has ties to the IRS. Yes, their father was security. Uh, for the New York facility, the same one that you, Cornelius, time traveled back from. Okay, Wait, time travel in this too? How deep does this go? I don't know. Oh, I uh, thought we were done with magic. I'm so tired of this. But I, I, this is, this is crucial. So you got the IRS. You got the funding. Uh -huh. but who's running this? And he slaps the off government. the piece of paper and slaps down a picture of a third figure. This absolute giant with this long orange hair and a flowery wreath. And he says, this is Chrysanthemum Hawthorne, the ringleader of Caldera. What? He just kind of looks like a hippie. 
Okay, wait, I have, I have a question. Wait, wait, wait. Before you get into this, how can a team that's theoretically playing this game you're also playing be in charge? And why? Why? I think this is some sort of deep undercover boss type situation. I've looked into their assignments. None of them, almost none of them, have been standard reflection game as we understand it. They have been sent on errands, on strange missions. They're just doing whatever the fuck they want from what I can tell. But I expended a lot of my former contacts, favors, goodwill to dig into Chrysanthemum. And what I found is shocking. This dude is a freak. First of all, the, his bank statements are insane the amount of money laundering this man does is off the charts constantly every two weeks there are records and it's almost the exact same amount every single time twenty thousand dollars and the statement is for zucchini oh no you're right that, okay no i'm i'm in this, okay. this, uh, that's that's fucked up i followed this guy he went out to like a like a party store. He brought his nephew, uh, uh, Klaus, I think is the name, who, by the way, was maimed the same night that that freak incident happened at Heart and Stone. Atticus, you remember that one. Yeah, that horrible monster thing. That horrible monster thing. Brought his nephew there to, to a party oh. store, disguised himself, and the kid starts screaming. There is something deeply wrong with this guy but i think the pressure of the game collapsing is getting to him so what do i find out but first thing this morning him his nephew and his brother booked a flight out to virginia do you want us to go follow them i need you to go follow them i need you to figure out exactly what they're up to and maybe we can get to the bottom of what's really going on here. No problem following them, but do you have any information on what he's doing out there? I tried. To be honest with you, didn't make a lot of sense. It feels like he's following up on a Blegs List article asking for a delivery. Uh, the town was McAfee Ridge. And the Blegs List article belonged to a guy, Stanley Kubernetes was the guy's name. Stanley Kubernetes. Atticus, this is serious. <laughs> I'm, I'm being perfectly serious. I really need, I really need your help. No, I'm, I'm just having a laugh, I promise. I, I have no problem stalking these weird individuals for you. Okay. Thank you. I am going to be in the area too, but he would probably recognize me. So I am going to stay extremely incognito and off the charts. Have you like talked to this dude before? Briefly. He was strangely silent during the interrogation, which is all the more reason why I think he is directly responsible. So I'll admit that the, the okay. zucchini thing, that's definitely weird. And um, I, I also agree with you that I think that he's suspicious based on that. But I don't know if the bringing his nephew into a party city and then his nephew got upset is weird. Scout doesn't like party city. Did I mention that he put on a disguise and intentionally tried to scare this child? No, okay, yeah, it's, I got his crosses a whole bunch of stuff out. Never mind. Yeah, no, no, I'm, bo I'm on board. That's, that, that's weird. Interesting. Interesting. How, how, how scary could you possibly be in, like, Party City stuff? Okay. I, okay, the clowns, the clown stuff in Party City, um, haunts my nightmares. It's like, it's like made out of plastic. Yeah, but it's it's really fucking spooky. Like the the way they the way they jump out at you and everything smells so Guys. Know, but there's something yeah. Guys, are you in? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Well what what do you want us okay, so we're looking for the something they could be hiding in relation to the game? Like we're trying to get you out of this, right? Like that's the whole point, right? Yeah, I what I really need is proof that this guy's in charge. If we can get that, 
I can finally go up to him. I can explain <laughs> that this is a huge misunderstanding, that none of us should be involved in this, and we are well prepared already for any sort of threat against humanity. Uh, but I can't do that unless I have proof, because they're just going to deny it to high heaven. Yeah, that mm. sounds right. Okay. All right. Proof of ownership. You know, this guy strikes me just from listening to him, hearing about him, that if you just go out right and ask him, there's a chance he might just say yes. You ever try just outright asking him? Just just for funsies. I feel like it would be a diversion. There has to be something, some way to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is responsible for this. All right, well, come on, Cornboat, let's go uh, do that, I guess. I, I don't really know. Are we going undercover? Or are we going to try and, like, interact with them? Or are we just going to, like, break into their room? I can still pick a lock pretty good. I think maybe following for the first, I don't know, little bit. I was going to give maybe, like, a specific time frame, but I don't think... I could even possibly fathom what a specific time frame would look like. Can't imagine this takes more than like a week, and that's even that's like kind of a lot. Yeah, no. Did you I, happen to? Did you happen to get the Craigslist at the Blake Briggslist? What is it? Uh, it's Briggslist, right? Blankslist, yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's, sorry, Blake. it's a pretty straightforward. Hey, I have something that I need brought somewhere else come help me they must know that guy because why in the world would you answer an ad that that ambiguous from a specific i mean this is like a middle of the nowhere like appalachia three hours to the nearest major city that's type just of place. appalachia though well exactly yeah, you, but why you this get to, you specific get to certain place? parts of the world and it's just do you think it's just more money laundering it very well could just be more money laundering it's gonna be really funny when it is in fact just more money laundering well, I mean, there's no reason we can't use the money laundering to try and blackmail them into admitting that they run the game and then using that to get us out of the game because we don't care about anything else. Just let us, just let, just let this team out. That's it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I'm on board. Oh, <sighs> sure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have to go back to some other scheming. Um, Atticus, please, you got to show Cornelius around. I mean, you've visited snoop's restaurant right yeah snoop is here yeah snoop is here and and he owns a restaurant if you can call it that but, but at the same time in fairness it's it's actually some of the best breakfast food i've ever had it doesn't come close to sunday breakfast at your house corn but like for a diner especially the way it looks it is shockingly good and you have to get the um the doll like the silver dollar pancakes just you can get any flavor and he really genuinely means any flavor I'm deeply concerned at the implications of how this place looks but i will give it a try <laughs> it look come on i start dragging him out it looks like cheese it looks like anderson have you eaten today come on you you come on all right all right i'll come too we go eat moldy cheese pancakes <laughs> you mean cheese you'll see <laughs> You'll see so what I Logically, we should introduce the new characters, right? Like that's like that would make sense. This would mm -hmm. this would be the perfect yeah. time to do it. There, no. Beth. Where are you? Are you in another dimension? No, I'm right here. What does that mean? I'll take your word for it. Anyway, <laughs> but now that I've just learned that Mark has no idea who's joining him, I'm kind of like, well, is the novelty? Should the novelty be in in not doing that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, listeners. I'll talk more about how you can learn about these cool cats after the episode. <laughs> All right. <laughs> who can tell me what happened? Uh, last time on this isn't Chris. Not me. I'd actually, I'd actually really also, like me. it if Mark could tell me what happened last time. Um, the only thing I remember is that I'm setting off on an adventure by myself with my brother, and, and then we did we did a thing. 
we went to the rich guy's house with the because of the Craigslist ad. Is that the last episode we did? Yep, that's because exactly that's the last. Thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I got this. I got this. Okay, okay. So we went to this rich dude's house because of a, a Craig's a Craigslist ad or a Craigslist ad, right? Yeah, Craigslist. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we went there, um, and he was like, "Oh, hey, I'm gonna ignore you and be on the phone the whole time." Uh, but here's uh, this this ghost man. How did the ghost man come about? He was in some type of device, maybe. Max, what was the ghost in? What did we have to do to get that ghost out of there? Dagger. The dagger, and we just, like, swing it around? Yeah. Yeah. And then he pops up, and he's like... And he farts a little bit, so we had to go outside. We went outside, and we talked to him. What the fuck did we do after that? And then we looked for a hotel? Maybe? Okay, what is what does the ghost want? What's the ghost's name, and what does the ghost want? Hold on. It's gotta be here. I'll even take what Sven? does the ghost w- Sven? It is Sven. Sven wants us to find Sil- Sylvester, the guy who's immortal. That's what I have written down here. Yeah, but then do you remember what he wants you to do once you find him? Yeah, kill him. little little stab you with- know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's so that's pretty good. So yeah, you guys were driving back into the town of McAfee Ridge, mm-hmm. and I'll. I'll recap for you what's in there in a few minutes, but your current goal is to find child care for your nephew. All right. So we asked him if there were any daycares and he was like the, the rich dude. And he was like, I don't fucking know. Right. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Instead of looking around, um, is there any service on my phone? Very little. All right, I'm going to say, hey, Lola, I got a question for you. Yes. Oh, I love that. Do you, can you <laughs> do me a favor, search through your fancy database and see if there's any, like, child care near me? Like, specifically maybe a daycare or, like, a lo- long-term babysitter? You hear a, fine, fine, I'm, I'm, I've been keeping you charged recently, okay? Yeah, thanks. For not letting me die, which, by the way, yeah. is, like, default standard. That was, like, your one thing that you wanted last time I talked to you, which was, like, months ago, probably. You yeah, wanted to be charged more. I did want to be charged more. <laughs> I, we shouldn't have had to have this conversation, is my point. All right. Um, well, I'll, what can I do to make you happier, Lola? I was fine. Listen, okay. There's, like, there's, like, nothing here. Like, no daycares there's like no day there's like five buildings in town that i can see there's like okay hang on there was an article from 2028 that Mm -hmm. the mcafee ridge public library hosted a children's summer event Mm -hmm. little summer camp all right let me lola can i have the the number to the uh, library better yet can you help me call the library? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh the phone rings and it sounds like someone tries to pick it up and you hear ah and it hangs up. All right. Well, all right. We're we're just going to go to the library, I guess. All right. So, you your brother and nephew drive back into the town of McAfee Ridge into the library. And as you're driving through uh, you pass by this sort of rather conspicuous black rental car with these uh, New Jersey plates, and it's driving in the opposite direction as you. And uh, okay. we're gonna we're gonna cut in on that uh, black car and its its occupants. Who's driving? Um. Well, I have a uh, base driving skill, so I have forty in drive. Oh, you drive. I'm driving. So sitting behind the wheel is a woman in her mid-30s with this long white hair and freckles and these bright green eyes. And sitting next to her is her accomplice, a gangly man uh, who has to be in his 40s with this messy uh, brown hair. And what else was he wearing? Just like a button down and some khakis. Just like a button down. Do you got like, like the tall guy, like sort of lanky? pose thing going on yeah 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 i changed my mind it's not khakis it's actually dirty old jeans that look like it despite how many times they've been washed the dirt is just in them forever 
Yeah, you guys lost service a little while ago, uh, but it's pretty much a straight shot out to the mansion where you stand in front of this dirty and decrepit building. It's It should have been beautiful probably like maybe 40, 50 years ago, but now it's just... Eh, maybe it has good bones. Yeah, you know. Okay. This looks uh, almost exactly like what I'd expect something out here to look like. Yeah, I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere, so... I just meant, like, haunted or cursed or fucked up. Well, I mean, it looks like it belongs in the middle of the woods, so... <laughs> yeah, you know, it's on point. It's got the aesthetic down. Um, yeah. Ugh, all right, well, I, I go up and I knock. All right, you hear crystal clear uh, on the other side of the thin wall. Coming! And uh, loud footsteps shuffling. And the door pulls back and you see like one of those little drawstring chains and behind it you see this like kind of young man he looks younger than you guys uh dressed in like the best way i can describe it is like ebenezer scrooge pajamas and he's oh. got he's got like one of the little like candles he's, he's got looking, the honk shoe me 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 fit he's got the honk <laughs> shoe me 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 fit yeah um <laughs> he looks at you like past the candle closes the door you hear the bolt unlock he opens it and he says, oh, thank God you're here. Okay, um, I don't have many tools, but I assume you guys are professionals. So um, there's a bunch of windows down here and a bunch of windows upstairs. So I'm just going to leave it in your hands to get to work. Huh? We're not your window breaker service. Okay. No. And uh, he closes the door. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I, knock, I knock a little bit harder. He, <laughs> he pulls back the drawstring again uh, and then unlocks it and says, what? We're we're here about the the Blake's list ad. God, <laughs> bad luck. I'm afraid the job has already been claimed. By who? By who? I don't know. By some tall, handsome man with this long, flowing orange hair, and his weird brother and nephew, maybe. Well, do you know where the hell they're going? Yeah, I assume they're gonna do whatever the fuck the ghost wanted i don't know ghost what i'm writing this down. you know what what did the ghost want oh man yeah he wanted okay so listen cursed artifact right super wacky whatever wave the dagger a few times and this ghost man appears and at first i was like wow this is really cool and then he kept talking about how he wanted to kill somebody and that was a little off-putting mm -hmm. but like i didn't really want to deal with it I'm trying to fix up this house, um, grandfather's house, whatever, probably cursed grandfather's house. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was just like, well, someone's got to take care of this dude's problem, right? So I put the agate up on uh, Blake's list, and they were the first ones to come and take it. So, sorry. Uh, well, how um, recently did they claim it? Maybe they need help. We're, yeah. We are experts in um, uh, ghostology. Okay, but I'm not splitting the reward with you guys. Oh, that's fine. What if we just do it first? Like a contest, you say? Yeah. Yeah. We're we're competitive people. Okay. Uh, well, let's just say that whoever happens to come back first, I'm not changing the prize. The prize is my time, which is very valuable. So, Continue. No, that's it. Oh, that's... all right. Well, where where are we where are we going? I don't know. I mean, if you got to go find him, he probably went back into town. There's nothing else around here for miles and miles. Is there mm -hmm. like, a, like a Blumkin in town or like There's... a community center? I mean, if you want food, you got to go to Appalachia Bees. Oh, if you okay. want community, I don't know. You could go to the library. That's a good community center location. Okay, uh, we'll check out the library. We'll check out the Appalachia Bees. Uh, what about, oh, oh, this is great. What about, uh, like, a? do you know, like, a daycare service or something? They, you said they have their nephew, right? There's no way they're taking their, like, kid on a ghost mission. I don't know. People are pretty fucked up. That would be deranged. Yeah, I guess. Uh, they could leave him no, at not, the Blowtail 6 for all I know. All right, Blowtail 6. That sounds horrific. Okay, thanks for your time, uh, Stuart. Um, see you later. I start leaving. He says, I never introduced <laughs> myself. I walk away. 
Okay. All right. Well, why don't we start at the library? Then we'll check the Balacha, up, up Balacha bees. And I'm not eating there unless we absolutely have to. That's fine. And there's no, there's, I'm crossing off the blow till six. There's no way they would just drop a, I mean, I don't know how old the kid is, but there's no way they drop a kid off at a motel and just leave them there. Right? Definitely not. Okay. All right. All right. I get back in the car, buckle my seatbelt, and teleport us to the local library. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, while you're driving back into town, Chris, your uh, rental car pulls up outside of uh, McAfee Ridge Public Library. We were here. It's this sort of like drab building. Um, as you like start to walk up, it looks pretty dusty, like almost nobody comes to this library. And as you, Mouse and Klaus, uh, enter, you see this disheveled, uh, balding man kind of has like a little hunchback uh standing behind the counter and most notably you see that his hands are covered in bandages and as you approach he says oh don't come any farther oh uh, maybe you shouldn't come close to me are you are you okay oh my god you got to be careful these books they are so sharp like the the papers yes all the pages and he he goes to, like, pick one up. He goes, ah, fuck, oh, God, now I need another bandage. Maybe try picking it up by the spine and not the pages. He, uh, he, like, quickly puts a bandage on this, this new cut he has, and he gingerly grabs the book by the spine and shaking, raises it, and he looks at it in shock, and he says, oh, my God, 30 years I have been doing this. Oh, you... Magic Man, what is your name? My name is Chris. Oh. Uh, Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum, welcome to McAfee Ridge Public Library. My name is Igor, head librarian. Oh, it's very nice to meet you, Igor. Um, this is, this is Klaus, and he gestures to Klaus, and he says, this is Mouse. Uh, Mouse waves apprehensively, and Klaus gives a, gives a hearty wave. And uh, Igor says, nice to meet you. Happy family. What can I do for you? Yeah, we're actually, um, we're looking for a, a, a child care program or like a summer camp. Maybe. Oh, yes. McAfee Ridge Public Library Public Summer Camp. Does it, is that still happening? Yeah, well, it's, it could happen. Uh, nobody has signed up and it starts tomorrow. What good timing. Crazy that nobody signed up and he like looks around. Is there anybody here? There's like, there's nobody. <laughs> there's like the lights are all like dimming and flickering. Like there's a, like a thick layer of dust on the tables. That's, what a shame. Um, well you have one participant and he gestures to Klaus. Oh, happy day. Young boy would like to join summer camp. And a uh, mouse pulls you into a huddle and he says, Chris, I don't know if we can trust this man with Klaus. What do you... I, I think that's kind of rude. Are you, like, is it because the hunchback? That's kind of <laughs> messed up, man. <laughs> mouse, you fuck! <laughs> right? That's a little... You got some... You got, we got some... You're a little prejudiced. That's a kind of... Ugh. Mouse uh, shoots you a dirty look and turns away. And says, sir, are you qualified to be <laughs> to be handling children? And he goes, oh, yes. Well, I have a degree in nannying, a degree in early childhood education, uh, a master's in nannying care from <laughs> Nanny U. <laughs> go, <laughs> go nannies. And then associates <laughs> and librarians. See that makes sense. They don't get to the they don't get to the the paper cuts until masters. Mouse, it just looks slack jawed, and he says, "Do you have, like, where will Klaus be sleeping?" And uh, Igor says, "Oh, I'll give you grand tour. Come, let us see facilities." As uh, and as this is happening, uh, Atticus and Cornelius, you pull the car up outside of the library is there anyone else here yeah there's another car parked outside is that uh was that the car that we drove past on the way out of the or into the place uh 
I can't tell. It looks like it, but all cars kind of look the same to me. Like all cars. You know, that's fair. Uh, let's just check inside. We'll just be... Oh, come on. Uh, knock on wood. And, uh, don't, don't make us go on a wild goose chase. Where the hell did you find wood in this car? Don't ask. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> what, what the hell? <laughs> Listen, on such short notice, uh, we only we can only use shady rental company. Um, not like you know, uh, I actually don't know any other rental companies that <laughs> Anderson booked it for us. Just shady rental company. Um, it, he rents out wooden cars. <laughs> it's like um, it's like one of those F one cars. The bottom's just wood. What? You guys <laughs> just... enter the library. You guys enter the dingy library, and uh, you see this this hunchbacked man turns towards you and says, "Oh." New friends! Careful! The books are sharp! Thank you. What? Are you also here for daycare tour service? No. Um, oh, come along, I... new friends! We will take a look at facilities. <laughs> I've just been introducing Happy Chrysanthemum family to summer camp. <laughs> Chris, like, waves. Atticus waves. Like, elbow Cornelius. A, we don't have a kid to add to this. Well, no you know, kid? my you're more uh, no, than no. welcome to stay yourselves if you would like. I grab oh, Cornelius by the arm. <laughs> I'll, I'll enroll Atticus. No, no, no. I really think that you could use some more socializing. Come on, let's go tour what? the facility with this happy. You need look at you. Look at you. You need it. Come on. You didn't even do things when you were a kid. You had like a gun. Oh, but you had the <laughs> kidney. Come along, happy family and gun family. Let us go. And uh, Igor, Igor heads around. Um, and pushes like this really like dusty door back and behind it you see this like beautiful <laughs> like well maintained like a like a kindergarten classroom Why, and what, past what it you fuck? see like this row of like well kept and and pretty state of the art bunk beds uh, yes chrysanthemum For family you have question no sorry i was just snapping at i thought i saw a cat oh no cats in here they upset my no. allergies no i can imagine i can imagine no. that's not the dust though not the copious overwhelming amount of dust he sort of like wipes a bandage hand across his nose he's like no i do ask well it's i can't help but notice i'm an allergen what yeah it's, it's like a that's like a really common allergen no i suppose but so are the books they are deadly you know but? Well, listen, my kids and my uh, friend slash son here is very allergic to dust. Oh, son friend, I'm so sorry to hear you have the dust allergen. What? I'm literally yeah. older than you, what? He, 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 I can't he, holds up a finger, he holds up a finger and says, I'm sorry, I need to have a word with chrysanthemum family. Okay. He turns and says, chrysanthemum family, how do these lodgings and accommodations work for your beautiful nephew here? Chris, Chris looks at Mouse and he's like, what do you think? Mouse, uh, like, checks his pulse. And he sighs, and he's like, I, um, are there, hey, Igor, it's Igor, right? Yes! Igor, are there any other child care facilities in your wonderful town? And Igor says, why, uh, no, but the, the Motel del Blotel 6, uh, you could, you could leave him there. And Mouse says, no, that's okay. Um, this will have to do. Klaus, maybe don't touch the books because I don't know what the hell's going on here. Uh, but this, I guess, will have to do. How much does it cost, sir? Why, to your beautiful, happy family, is free. Zero dollars and zero cents is taxpayer funded. Then... <laughs> Woohoo! Happy day! Happy family! Happy day! And Mouse says, Okay, great. Chris, any questions for our friend Igor here? How long does the summer camp go on for? Well, it goes on for three months, but it's check-in, check-out. Oh. You need to be here for three months. You need to be here two days, 15 minutes. We will watch your beautiful child, and they will be so safe. That's lovely. Chris, like, looks at Klaus, and he's like, Klaus, what do you think? Klaus is, like, just kind of absentmindedly flipping through a book. And Igor says, oh, the chosen one. <laughs> My God. I heard, I heard that I heard the legends inscribed on the walls. <laughs> one day a child 
would enroll in this summer camp and be able to read the books. Mr. Beautiful Chrysanthemum Family, this child is a prodigy. Uh, uh, thank you. I don't know. I don't, uh, he, yay, he, Klaus. He bends over and he says, Mr. Klaus, have you ever wanted to be a librarian? <laughs> Klaus, and Klaus looks up and says, do you have a um, blamely ply? <laughs> and, and Igor says, I see a beautiful future for you here. And he, he turns a hand and he says, go, both of you, enjoy your stay in beautiful McAfee Ridge. When you return, your son will be a legend. I, thank you. Um, Mouse, are you ready? Mouse is like, no, but I don't think we have any other choice. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah. Right. Uh, Atticus and Cornelius, the, the short man standing next to Chris shoots you a weird look and says, Okay, well, bye. And uh, starts walking out. You know, I, <coughs> I, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Gore. I gotta go outside. I start dragging Cornelius. I, this this place isn't really suited for a family like ours. Our disposition is too dusty. <laughs> yeah, Igor. my allergies are really killing me. You can tell by the way it's affecting you. <laughs> Igor yeah, waves it... and he says, Goodbye, unhappy gun family. <laughs> See you later. Thank bye. you for the tour. Don't remember us? Okay. Um, chasing down <laughs> Mouse and Chrysanthemum. You see a Mouse kind of like turns back and like with these wide eyes starts like speed walking and is like grabbing Chris. Yeah, Chris is following. He's like, why are they chasing us? I don't know. Let's just get to the car. Okay. I want to be clear. I'm not like running. I'm I'm doing that like mom power walk aggressively. Yeah. That's Still a, terrifying. That's enough for this nervous man. He is like booking <laughs> it out of there. Uh, I push. I'm like, go Cornelius. You're, you go catch up to them. <laughs> what do you mean? What? Look at your lights. What? Go. <laughs> what do I say to them? Uh, we need the knife. Uh, for, uh, we're ghost. We're we just be Phoebe. We're, we're paranormal investigators. We heard they had a, a cursed knife and we want to be part of their mission. Okay. You know, they can, they can have the prize for all we care. I start running. <laughs> okay. Still just power walking. Uh, outside mouse is like, beating on like the unlock button it's just not unlocking what the fuck i like wave to them and i'm like hey hey i i actually had a question for yeah. you guys yeah did you happen to uh get that knife from that guy <laughs> Chris, no. the knife. he's like pulling on the door handle because he said that no he's, he said that the most handsome man in the world with like the most beautiful orange <laughs> hair like <laughs> took it and uh you do kind of fit that description as like Maybe one of the most beautiful tall men with orange hair I've ever seen, so. Thank you. And Chris is also trying to, like, get in the car. <laughs> Mouse, Mouse points on <laughs> two accusing fingers and says, that's a weird thing to say to someone you've just met. What, that he's handsome? Yes. I, I think it's a compliment. That's, like, a, a nice thing to say to someone. Sorry, next time I'll call him fucking ugly. My bad. <laughs> I pop up and push Cornelius, like, wow, hey, <laughs> we sure did get off on a foot. Um, I, I'm Atticus. Um, sorry to... To, to scare you guys we're genuinely just really interested in paranormal activity and when that guy said that his cursed knife had a ghost in it um we're not interested in the prize or you know whatever we're just i know it's weird but we're really interested in the ghost knife can we tag along not in your car just on your adventure what we said are we here to talk to you it had ghostly instructions yeah not like find a treasure ghostly instructions look i'm sorry uh don't know you don't think you really want to get involved with this this is between oh, it's a, it's no a no Wait. it's a revenge ghost right yeah he wants you to kill a guy or something we already know about that and you still want to tag along what, what part yeah. of yeah paranormal I mean, investigator we, it's, we have to investigate the ghost why does he want to kill the guy what guy is he gonna kill what happens if he kills the guy uh, it's all it's we're we're like journalists for the spooky. Mouse turns towards Chris. I mean, you guys seem to know a lot about it already, and like honestly, I could probably beat at least the tall one up, so not to worry about getting killed. I'm yeah. just saying, like, if you try to kill us, like I'm not I mean, I'm not the most scared. Not okay. not there's no no offense to you, like genuinely no offense to you, but like I mean, yeah. he I like look, flexes. I'll lift up my pant leg a bit, show off a prosthetic, like I I've got one leg and i'm not inclined to attack people so uh, now who's being prejudiced chris look at you what 
Th- it's fine if it's you. Like you can say I've got a prosthetic limb, but you were judging that guy by his hunchback. You're that gonna was beat him up. You're just gonna beat him I up. Didn't, I didn't say I was gonna beat him up. I said if need be. It's not like it's a hypothetical. You know. He well, he turns back and he says, "All right, I'm um, Mouse Hawthorne. I'm Chris Thanthamum, but I go by Chris. Nice to meet you both. My name's Cornelius Miller." Do you go by corn? No. Do you go no. by a different last name? Needlesser sometimes. What? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm Atticus Rivers. <laughs> well, it's it's nice to meet both of you. Uh, sorry, you kind of freaked us out. Yeah, no, sorry. I like couldn't think of a better way to approach you, and you guys seemed like really off put, and I just didn't want you to like drive away, and then we had to like chase you in a car because I felt like that might be more dangerous. Yeah, yeah also, more legal. M- Mouse, are you like? good you're kind of freaking out uh mouse looks towards you atticus and says sorry what was your last name Bitter? with a b you... yeah wh- why do you care so much there's a b no <laughs> <laughs> no no reason no reason uh hey we were gonna head over to that appalachia bees do you um maybe we can talk more there sure okay, okay. We'll see you there in just a few. Come on, Chris. And he, like, uh, he just pulls on the handle and unlocks. And he's like, Jesus fucking Christ. And he gets in. Yeah, Subarus don't respond to panic. It's built into them. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get in my car. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Max here for your regularly scheduled ad break. What's up? Thanks for listening to episode 58. Is that right? Could that be right? Of the Reflection Cave? Is it right? I think that's the right one. I'm going to keep talking while I double check, but I really hope you're enjoying this. Uh, Please remember, as always, to tell a friend about This Isn't Normal because it helps us out tremendously. My God, it is 58. That's wild. That's wild. A bit of a different announcement for you this week, which is, of course, you have been introduced, if you're not familiar already, with uh, Atticus Rivers and Cornelius Needlesser, who, if you really have not listened to some of our previous stuff. You may remember from the legendary episode that we posted a few weeks ago. Now, these are characters who were heavily featured. In fact, Atticus and Cornelius were both player characters in our season two and... Well, in our season two campaign and also very heavily featured in our season 2.5 campaign. So if you want more background about who they are, what they're doing... Uh, Maybe not exactly what they're up to here, but, you know, just sort of in general. Uh, Of course, we have season two entirely in podcast form. Uh, There are, ma'am, there are audio versions uh, on YouTube as well, but we're on Spotify, Podcast Addict, any podcast app or service you can think of. So it's all there for you if you want it. Um, I also just want to say, we'll talk about Patreon in a second, I, everyone's favorite portion of the ad breaks, I'm sure, is that I, I owe a clip of Fool's Gold Episode 3, and I don't think we're going to do it this week because this episode's a little longer, but it's coming, so don't worry about that. And of course, we do have the final part of Fool's Gold also coming out on Patreon later this month, which I'm very excited for. And uh, if you're not familiar, for some reason, we're on Patreon at patreon.com slash tincast. That's how we fund and support the show. And so if you'd like to be a patron, you can do so over there. You get a ton of cool stuff, including a bonus episode every month. And for $10 or more a month, we thank you each and every week during this portion of the show, which is why it's time to thank Mango, Amanda Crondar, Morgan Wolbrandt, Emmy Lynn Laderna, Smarties, Charlie Rose, Adam Carpenter, and Marco Malmstrom for their continued support of the show. Thank you guys so much. Um, that's, that's about it. Tell a friend. <laughs> and let's get back into the madness. What do you what do you say? Join us again next week, same time, same place, for another episode of the Re- Reflection Game. And until then, stay safe, drink lots of water, and have a nice week. You're good to know. <laughs> and, uh, mouse, mouse starts the car and says, Chris. Yes? That woman, you were mentioning to me that you dealt with a rivers right back at little rockefeller chris like goes he's like uh yeah 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 did chris they, like kind of goes slack jaw. <laughs> did they look 
similar. So why the fuck are they following us? Maybe they're like a guardian angel from the future. Do you have experience with guardian angels from the future? No, but like that's it, you do babies <laughs> in there. We don't know what could happen. Okay, we got to we got to keep these guys under a tight leash. You understand? Okay. Like keep an eye on them. Like don't let them out of our sight. Well, they're out of our sight right now. Well, yeah, but after we get to Appalachia Bees. Okay, okay. All right. All right. And let's not tell them any more than we have to okay I, I yeah that's fair like i don't really know them so yeah exactly they're yeah. strangers we need to treat Str- them yeah like strangers who are maybe dangerous so stranger danger literally stranger danger and it's, yes. it's occurring right. to me that i literally just left my son with a stranger um <laughs> well it's a government facility is it so like it'll be it's it's a tax funded uh building you know it'll be fine it'll be fine we can come check on him yeah i guess so we should we should check on him in the morning okay great and uh your your cars pull up outside in this little dirt parking lot and of course everyone knows appalachia bees is the yes. crown jewel of the region an americana paradise unparalleled and uh you all come in and a waitress comes over and says hi y'all welcome to appalachia bees can i have how many are you dining with us four four, four? wonderful yes. well i have plenty of table would you want a table or a booth booth yeah. like a booth all right Agreed. excellent choice she uh shuttles you all over to a booth and says i'll be right back to get your drinks uh look over the menus and she scuttles off okay what what's on the menu it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> matter what's on the menu beth it doesn't matter because you're Read me the menu <laughs> because all right item number one french fry they got onion ring they got mashed potatoes they, got, they have baked potato skins. They have baked potato skins. They have bacon baked potato skins. Butternut Ooh. squanch. They got oh, no. regular squanch. They got yellow and green or blue squanch. Cornelius, are you eating the squanch again? No, I think I'm just going to maybe get like a little pasta platter. Ooh, I'm going to get the super fries. The what? <laughs> uh, The super fries. Lily won't ever let me eat them. So just it's just it's. Fries covered in ranch dressing, gravy, and um, I don't know, whatever else they have in the kitchen, I guess. That's just what it says here. <laughs> and whatever else we have in the kitchen, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> just the miscellaneous with the little asterisks. Well, uh, I can see why she doesn't normally let you get that. You gotta live on the wild side every once in a while, and this is, we also, I'm so tired of chain restaurants. Mouse is like tapping his fingers impatiently against the table says so paranormal investigators yeah yeah we like did that for a while and like it was a little crazy honestly do you have like Uh, references it was in a blog article by my friend phoebe like a decade ago we went squogurt hunting what is a squogurt oh Oh, it's horrible you actually don't really want to know about that no it's no like a regional tell, cryptid made out of yogurt and hair eat. yeah toupee actually recycled it's rancid it's the vanilla flavor so, so a reference a... so is there like someone i could call who maybe you helped or worked with you could probably call like the, the town hall of like Sinzaba, connecticut yeah the mayor she's speak to the mayor terms with us I actually work at the mayor's office, just not right now. Okay, and the mayor is... Uh, her name's Rose. Okay. Um, Chris, you want to go call quick? Uh... I'm like, I'm, I'm kinda... like, I am panicked. <laughs> Brain messaging Anderson to say, tell Rose to tell whoever calls that we're paranormal investigators. Tell Rose just over and over again. <laughs> I mean, and Chris is like, I'm... 
do you want to go call? You're better at like talking to people. I mean, and I can, I can just like, hang out here with our buddies. I can like I can like call her on my phone and put her on speakerphone. You could both talk to her. Sure. All right. Okay. I take out my phone, which uh, are you ready for this? It's a flip phone. <laughs> And I and I open Whoa. my flip phone and I type the number in by my own hands and then I call. Atticus is shaking her head. Mouse is blown away. Those. What? I, I, you shake your head, but I, when's the last time you were able to make a phone call without having to ask someone? Yeah, maybe I didn't like how touch screens worked, and maybe I didn't like um, phones that much. Maybe I like having a sassy, angry, equally constantly exhausted other person living in my pocket. That is right. because you are a lesbian. Anyways. <laughs> listen. I see wrong. you. I've met your wife. <laughs> I know. I know. I can't. You're not even wrong. That's, I, that's why. That's the best part. You're not even fucking wrong. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Cornelius, you call the town hall of New Sinsba, Connecticut. And you hear, hello, this is the mayor's office. This is Jolene. The receptionist Hi. at the mayor's office. Hi, Jolene. It's Cornelius. Um, would you mind transferring oh, me Cornelius, to Rose? Oh, Cornelius, you sweetheart. How's it going? Oh, good. We're just doing like a little paranormal investigation, and we had some friends here who just wanted to check some credentials. Oh, so. Cornelius, you're so handsome, and you're so paranormally inclined. Married. What? And married, mm. and and with children, and need to talk to the mayor at at the utmost speed. Yeah, I remember. I remember when you uh used to go down to that abandoned warehouse, and you were clutching all them uh them coffees. Jolie, yeah, please for, transfer us to Rose. For, 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 oh, right, Can sorry. you transfer me? Sorry. Yes, of course. Hang on, transferring you right now. Nice to talk to you, Cornelius. Always a blessing to hear from you. Oh, Thank you. Life's a blessing. And then it clicks. Uh, and after grief. a minute, you hear, hello? Hi, Rose. It's Cornelius. I was just uh, just calling to um, have you talk to some new friends that we've just made. We're on a little paranormal investigation, and they just wanted to cre check uh, credentials on on how many times we've done this before or if we're like good at it and stuff. Mousa starts like clamming up and desperately looks to you, Chris, to to lead this conversation. Great. All right. Hi. Um. My name is Chris. Um. Yeah. We're just uh. We're we're. I guess we're kind of teaming up with with the uh, Atticus and Cornelius, and we just want to make sure that like, you know, they're they're good at what they do. Um. And if you could like, you know, just fill us in a little bit. Uh. You hear a pause, and you hear. Your name is Chris? Chrysanthemum, yes. Right. Calling about credentials? Yeah, yeah for all of the, the ghost stuff we've done. Right. And all of our experience and all, all that. of the ghost stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, these guys are like kind of local legends. Um, back in 2019, they dealt with a man who could alter reality by wishing. And then they took down and investigated giant worms. Like, I'm not talking like night crawlers. I'm talking like dune worms. Like an Alaskan um, bullworm. They have real big ones. That clarifies it. That clarifies it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never seen, I've never seen dune or dune two or dune three or four. So they uh investigated and <laughs> resolved uh an incident with mermaids once atticus like pales at that and i forgot um, about the mermaids and i then, didn't know anyone else knew about the mermaids yep they resolved that one all right uh and then they did vampires and a cult so yeah these guys are pretty like pretty with it okay cool and like they're you know like succession rate like it, it, like they're you know are they pretty good at this yeah it's pretty, like how often do they succeed pretty often yeah okay all right cool um i, I mean i think that's all i needed to know uh mouse do you have any questions mouse is like no that's pretty thorough uh well thank you for your time madam mayor 
um, very kind of you to speak on their behalf. Hey, thanks. Have a good evening. And Rose says, goodbye. Okay, goodbye. And hangs out. See you, Rose. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that definitely, yeah, helps out a little bit. Um, Mouse, are you feeling, you know, a little bit better now? Yeah, I, I, I think I am. Um, thank you. That, you know, that really means a lot. Yeah, of course. Uh, Atticus, your phone starts ringing. I answer it, uh, and step away, excuse me for a second, uh, from the table, just to answer it without looking who it is. Uh, hello? You hear, this dude's insane! Is this Anderson? Yes, it's Anderson! Yeah, no, no shit! <laughs> no me, fucking Atticus, shit! This guy's playing 4D chess with you. Don't Trust him. I don't... Bud, listen. You know he just called I... Rose, right? Yeah, because we told them to. We he did that. He met Rose. Who? Wait. Who, the little mousy guy or the old No, guy? the tall Chris met Rose. What? He was partially okay. interrogating her. And my kids. The kids? I'm telling you, he's playing dumb. Don't trust him. Okay. All right. All right. I I hear you. I hear you, and I trust you. I'll uh relay that to Cornelius when we're out of here. But for now, I gotta go back and have dinner. Dinner with him? Yeah, dinner. All right. Talk to you later. Love you, brother. Bye. And I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to the table, and I'm like, sorry, my family is a lot sometimes. Um. So, what? Well, now you know quite a bit about us, but uh, we don't really know much about you guys. What do you do for a living? Oh, well, I um, ran a pretty successful um, antique store. My passion is in tailoring. Um, oh. But, you know, the antique store sort of pays the bills. Oh, that's really cool. I actually, uh, I do like farming on a, on like a, a colonial era home that I like kind of restored. No, that's very nice. Chris? What are you doing right now, buddy? Um, I mean, I used to run a zucchini stand, but um, kind of, you know, gave that up to just travel a little bit. A zucchini stand? That's I've never heard. I, I didn't know those existed. What did? Yeah, it's it's like a you know like it wasn't like very profitable, but it was it was a family business. Do you guys That's just fair. like just raw zucchini? No, no, it was, uh, man, what's that stuff called? It's a uh, carob? Is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Hold on, I have to get this fucking cat out of here. She's crawled in <laughs> under the door. She, like, I had the door closed, and she was, like, <laughs> and crawled in under. I forgot that Chris that Rose. <laughs> <laughs> so did Chris. Chris is like, this woman sounds so unfamiliar. I trust her. I'm glad that no one bothered to, like, look up what the mayor's last name was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mayor, Rose, okay. Yeah. It's not gonna. Uh, I wasn't gonna offer it if no one asked. <laughs> Rose, who? Uh, yeah, you know, the uh, mayor. Mayor Rose. So yeah, okay. so so the so the carob covered zook. Yeah. Uh, oh, do you like grow zooks on your farm, or like yeah. have you ever? I like so. We like kind of do a farm stand thing during the summer, but most of the stuff that we grow ends up just kind of like feeding the family because stuff got like really expensive out of nowhere like five ten years ago. So. Yeah, no, I used to spend twenty thousand dollars on zucchinis a month, so I, what? I get it. What? Wait, wait. <laughs> you just said your business wasn't was not profitable. Oh, that's it was not profitable. I threw out so many zucchinis. Why didn't you just like order less? That was the way we had always done it. i Papa Papa said twenty thousand dollars in the zucchini stand. Mouse is just um, like shaking his head slowly. I mean like, like a year? I mean this I mean this like maybe <laughs> In the most like concerned for your finances for the future way possible, was your dad mm -hmm. money laundering and just didn't tell you that and then left you in the dark about how I, to I, do that? I think it like be the first time this happens, okay? I think like if my if if Papa was money laundering, he would have told me instead of saying, "Hey, there, put twenty thousand dollars in the zucchini stand every month." Mouse Mouse does the meme where he like goes to speak and then like closes his fist and in one motion from that he puts a hand on chris's shoulder and pulls him into a huddle across the booth and says <laughs> chris was papa money money laundering no i think 
No, he no, he just said put 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 twenty thousand dollars in the zucchini stand every month. So I don't think. He oh my that. God! Was there was there money in the zucchini stand? Oh my God! Did he pull an Arrested Development? What? B- B- arrested Development? No, Dad would no. He wasn't that smart. Mouse very slowly turns back and says, "No, it wasn't money laundering." <laughs> I okay. I, I nod. Uh, yep, yeah, that sounds like a like a perfectly normal and and. Sane and rational business practice, and definitely not money laundering. So the ghost, for sure. Yeah, the ghost. Um, so is it like how recent of a ghost is it? Oh uh, shoot! Did he say Chris? No, and he spoke like he was. He had like a modern lingo, didn't he? Yeah, it's pretty modern lingo, but like he looked pretty old. Should we? Should we just ask him? Not in the middle of Appalachia's. Hold on, I'll be right back. Chris oh, has the dagger with him and he goes to the bathroom. <laughs> in the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, elbow Cornelius, and I'm like, don't you have to pee? Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. I could go. <laughs> Sorry, it's part get of up my... and I go to the bathroom with Chris. All right. It's awkwardly sitting there with Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mouse Mouse does not provide any conversation. Uh, <laughs> but in the, in the bathroom, Chris, do you wave the dagger? Yeah, I like bring Cornelius in the stall with me. <laughs> just in case somebody like <laughs> comes in here, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I wave it. I wave it around a little bit. I okay. say, ooh, ooh, "Ooh, yeah!" So this blue smoke starts like pouring out onto the floor and rising in the general vicinity of the toilet. Is Sven, <laughs> who Cornelius, just for for your reference, is this is this sort of blue spectral figure in this long robe, and he says. I live again. I s- oh, sorry. I spend. Oh, hello again. Hey, I, we we were just wondering, like, where, when, when are you from? Like, what time period did you live in? I was born in the year sixteen seventy six. Oh. And what year did you become a ghost? Like. <laughs> 1706. Oh. Oh. That sucks. All right. Um, Pretty bad. All right. So he was, he was like 30? Yeah. Okay. That's that's wild. All right. I'm going to wash my my hands. I'm going to wash my hands. (laughs) Oh, we do it. We wash our hands together. Not in the same sink. Yeah. Yeah. You guys. No, I I assume there's at least two sinks. Share a hand dryer. (laughs) Yeah. You guys share a hand dryer and you come back out. (laughs) And, uh, Two Cornelius... sinks, but only one hand dryer is kind of crazy. <laughs> There's only one. It's just the one. Uh, <laughs> as you guys leave, Cornelius, the uh, the waitress like stops you and puts a hand on your tall shoulder and says, "Hey, sweetie, just so you know, um, there's no vaping allowed in the bathrooms." Oh, I don't vape. Yeah, why do you assume it was him? There was, was it you? No. <laughs> there, was, there was blue smoke pouring out from under the door just a second ago. So uh, Oh, that that was my haunted overall button. Sorry. It happens sometimes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to come over in just a minute to take y'all over. Why don't you go sit back down? Okay. Thanks so much. Have a, have a see you soon. I walk away. <laughs> have a see you soon. <laughs> I was going to say have a good day, but we're going to see her in like two minutes. You come back. Atticus is just telling Mouse uh, about her kids. Just n- do- not waiting for like input. Just c- talking about him. Yeah, Mouse is like, uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Cool. <laughs> yep. And then they their favorite color blue, except for Finch. He only really likes green. But uh-huh. I- actually, you know, he might be like leaning more towards red. But that's really only way we play with the blocks. Chris, oh, you're, you're back. back. Thank God, Cornelius. Uh, get, did <sighs> you guys know there's no vaping allowed in the bathroom? We were, we were warned of that, even though we didn't even vape in the bathroom. Yeah, we Why are you vaping in the bathroom? Attempts. We literally weren't. And I don't think vape smoke is blue last time. I, I mean, maybe. I don't well, know. If, you I get, like, if you get the super vape, but that's like, I think that's actually <laughs> illegal. <laughs> it might be illegal. <laughs> they banned it in North America like three years ago. <laughs> As they should. Those things are fucking deadly. <laughs> it's uh, like crazy that they put off that like pigmented smoke. Anyways, I sit yeah, down. It can't be good for your lungs. Yeah. The the waitress comes over and says, "So, what's everyone getting?" Oh, oh. yeah, I'm uh oh you you can go first. Oh, uh can I get a half order of the super fries with extra chicken? Oh, sure. Yeah, of course. I think we actually have pork on it today, not chicken. Is that okay? Yeah, that's totally fine. Wonderful. I guess uh, hi. 
Um, could I get the uh, <laughs> the the chicken fajita brol up? Was yeah. it your birthday? <laughs> so, um, no. for for the chicken fajita brol up, uh, I do require that you read off to me the full description so I make sure I understand which item you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let me just uh, look at the menu. Um, so it says uh, fucking bla blabalation mountain. <laughs> Um, the Blapalasia bees. I, I I sent the the Appalachia bees menu in the chat yeah. so that we you could all look sure at it. Did. That's, that's, I did, and I'm looking at it right now. Um, it I, says it's. Oh, go ahead, Beth. I was gonna say opening Appalachia bees menu caused my internet to freeze, so all of you just went like. <laughs> really, oh, me man. too. I opened it again to be like, what was I gonna get? And then I had to close Chrome so fast because Mac started. To... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh no, Appalachia bees. It takes all of your processing power to process the menu of Appalachia Bees. The menu of Appalachia Bees is so strong that it will lag your computer. It's true. It's a uh, well, since you're ordering straight off the menu uh, on the mobile app, I do know exactly which one you're talking about, so I don't need you to recite it. Uh, what about you, oh, sir? Okay. What are you getting? Oh, me? Uh, I was going to do the classic broccoli chicken Alfredo. <laughs> yeah, the, the Appalachia Bees staple. <laughs> and uh, Mouse says... Yeah, I'm gonna get the Blexmex uh irresistible 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 blol. Because <laughs> I see there's there's a big R. There's a big registered next to irresistible. <laughs> Boar. Irresistible. Irres can I get the <laughs> can I get the irresistible board, the non uh registered <laughs> property? <laughs> the woman says, Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, I'll be right back. And she's Shuffles oh, off. just could, could could we get some, huh? like two orders of breadsticks for the table with the with the sauce on the side? Oh yeah, of course. Thanks so much. Mouse is like she didn't even order our drinks. Yeah, no. yeah. What the fuck? Hold yeah. on. When she can comes I back. I want ice tea. Oh, can I also get a margarita? You're driving. Oh, cancel my margarita. <laughs> Mouse says, oh, I'll have her margarita. <laughs> Mouse, you're you're driving. Oh, I'll shit. have her margarita. <laughs> Water for me. Um, Get iced tea. Can I have the super coke? <laughs> the, <what? laughs> the one with extra poison? Yeah. The extra Stop. chemicals? Uh, yeah, Lily won't let me have it. I, we're on page yeah, two. Like... <laughs> I, I like when you're alive. Don't get that. <laughs> the effective toilet bowl cleaner? What the no. fuck? No. Can I have that on the side? It's like a shot glass. Yeah. Thanks. What the what the fuck? You gotta be adventurous. They're, these are all just the euphemisms. That's like, uh, I'm pretty sure that's like, um, like lime juice is the extra bullet, extra toilet bowl cleaner. Uh, and there's like no. the ice is the, the, sure the bleach just, or whatever. It's just no. extra chemicals. Look, that's, look at this. That's, it, sorry, sorry, they, go like, ahead. They, like corporate, like the government decided that corporations had to disclose what they were putting in it. Yeah, and like, if you look at the bottom of the menu, there's a little star next to the super Coke and it says, don't fucking drink this. Uh, it's literally a warning that just says, don't drink this. It's bad. It's got a California uh, prop 65 warning that says it's detrimental to your health. <laughs> oh, I thought that was just like for fun. Um, okay. No. Gonna, oh. <laughs> Cookies and cream milkshake instead. Don't get the super. Don't get the super one. <laughs> no, no, I get the regular one because Cornelia's threatened to tell my wife. I will. <laughs> She'll be so mad at me. <laughs> one super I know cookies she will. and I'll cream also milkshake. Be mad at you. <sighs> no, oh. no, not super. Not, not super. Ah, oh, beans. All right. Dump it out, She's, Henry. I think. I think this lady's trying to kill you. Well, a lot of people have tried. And you know what? What? <laughs> Chris, well, I'm sorry. Ask. When I when I say people, I mean like ghosts and werewolves and mermaids. I mean, all right. He gives <laughs> you like a side eye. I, I side eye him back. Uh, Mouse, <laughs> Mouse says, uh, "Okay, so it's getting pretty late. We need a plan, though. Where are you guys staying? I guess at the um, the, the you know I didn't actually six. think about that yet. Wait, I wrote down there. We asked the uh, oh, the no, guy. My internet." Oh, oh, sorry. No. Yeah, there's a Blowtail Six. That's probably where we're gonna stay. There, I don't, I don't think there is any other place. Yeah, I think that's where we were gonna stay too, right, Chris? Yeah, that's literally the only place within like fifty miles. Yeah. 
Uh, so maybe we can talk to our friend there and uh, come up with a plan. Okay. And I, like, I'll just want to make this super clear again. We're not interested in whatever reward the guy, like Stuart, I think his name was. That is all you guys. Totally, you can 100% have his prize. We don't care about that. You mean That's three. certainly not his name. He did not introduce himself. He looked like a Stuart to me. Uh, that was the vibe I got. Stanley. No, you were close. Oh, you were actually pretty close. Oh, I still like Stuart better. Okay. And uh, you all have an uncomfortably quiet meal with lots of sort of nervous looks shooting across the table, mostly from Mouse. No, um, whenever I see Mouse giving me an uncomfortable look, I just open my mouth and start uh, insert another fact about my children every <laughs> single time. And uh, before long, your two cars set off towards Blotel 6 to begin your plan next time or if you're like us in a few calendar minutes wow yeah. Yeah. how many calendar minutes is a few five so I shouldn't get McDonald's no stop <laughs>